The rain was relentless that night, a ceaseless torrent that blurred the world beyond my windshield into a murky abyss. The wipers fought a losing battle against the deluge as I navigated the desolate road that wound through the heart of nowhere. The clock on the dash read just past midnight, the witching hour when the world tilts just a bit closer to the shadow realm. That's when I saw her, a silhouette barely discernible through the rain-smeared glass, thumb jutted out in a silent plea for escape from the storm. Hesitation gnawed at my gut, a primal warning that something was amiss. Yet, against better judgment, I stopped. The door opened and she slipped inside, a spectral figure drenched to the bone, her eyes wide with an emotion I couldn't quite place. Fear, perhaps, or desperation. Thank you. She whispered, her voice a mere wisp of a sound. Could you take me here? A trembling hand extended a scrap of paper toward me, an address scrawled in hurried handwriting. It was a part of town I knew well, a charming neighborhood where the past clung to the cobblestone streets like an autumn mist. We drove in silence, the only sounds the relentless assault of rain against the car and the occasional thunderclap that seemed to shake the very air around us. She shivered in the passenger seat, a ghostly figure wrapped in her own arms for warmth. I offered her blanket from the back seat, but she declined with a shake of her head, her gaze fixed on the passing shadows beyond the glass. The address led us to a house that seemed untouched by time. A relic of a bygone era, nestled among ancient oaks that whispered secrets in the wind. As we approached, she turned to me, her lips parting as if to speak, but no words came. I pulled to a stop, and when I turned to offer a parting word, she was gone. The passenger seat was empty, save for the damp imprint of her presence. Confusion gave way to a cold dread that settled in my bones. I stepped out into the storm and approached the house, the knocker cold and heavy in my hand. The door creaked open, revealing an elderly couple. Their faces were etched with the lines of countless sorrows. I, I think I brought your daughter home, I stammered. The absurdity of the words not lost on me. Their reaction, however, was not what I expected, not disbelief or anger but a resigned sorrow, as if my words had merely confirmed what they already knew. Our daughter. The woman began, her voice quivering with age and grief. She died on that road many years ago. Every year, on the anniversary of her death, she tries to come home. The man placed a comforting arm around her as tears welled in their eyes, mirroring the rain that continued to fall outside. I returned to my car, a chill enveloping me that had nothing to do with the storm. The drive home was a blur, my mind grappling with the night's events. Had I crossed into the realm of the supernatural, or was it merely a trick of the mind, a hallucination born of fatigue and the storm's fury? Yet the damp seat beside me served as a tangible reminder of the encounter, a silent testament to the hitchhiker who had vanished into the night. As I lay in bed that night, the sound of rain against the window lulled me into a fitful sleep. Dreams of shadowy figures and whispered goodbyes haunting the edges of my consciousness. The vanishing hitchhiker had found her way home, leaving me to ponder the thin veil that separates the living from the dead and the stories that linger long after were gone, whispered on stormy nights to those who dare to listen.